Hey guys, Blazing Wrath here, and in this video, I'm going to go over the multiplayer blog post that 343 posted a few days ago on the Flight 2 tech test. They basically compiled all of our feedback from the Flight 2 tech test, much like they did with the first one, and just gave us answers on whether shit will be fixed or not, or maybe something will be fixed later on post-launch. Now there's a lot of shit in this blog post, and I'm not going to go over everything, but if you want to go over everything, I'll leave the link down in the description. I'm just going to talk about the things that interested me in this blog post. Now the first thing they go over is accessibility features, which overall uh, it seems very positive. But the two points I want to, well, point out is there's feedback for a desire for an auto sprint option, as well as a desire to customize placement and size of HUD elements. Both of these options will be added post-launch sooner rather than later. I'm actually kind of curious, how many people actually do use the auto sprint option in an FPS game? Uh, not, to, not to talk shit or anything, I'm just curious how many people actually use that option. I have, um, I know Titanfall is popular and has that option, but I personally turned that option off. But just something, just food for thought. And the desire to customize placement and size of HUD elements? Oh man, 343, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, there's no way I can, like, form feedback or anything right now, so I'm just going to be really blunt. And then everyone else in the community has done a pretty good job explaining why people don't like the HUD. And so I'm sorry, 343, your HUD is just shit. <laughs> I don't like the HUD. Everything is just too small and just... Uh, just give me back the old HUD, 343. We had... It, it was fine. I know why it's I know why you guys changed it. I just give me back the old HUD. The next thing they go over is audio, and overall, there's really nothing much to say here. Everybody loves the audio, and overall, the audio team is really enjoying our positive feedback we've been giving them. Next is the live team. Overall, our positive feedback that we've given them is that we really like the customization, which is true. The customization is phenomenal so far in this game. However, the feedback we've been giving them are many players want to earn per match XP outside of challenges, um, concerns around timed double XP boost efficiency, as well as the, uh, the desire for a career ranking system in addition to the battle pass. Oh, and by the way, battle passes are confirmed to be $10 each. But I don't know if I mentioned that in any of my videos, but there you go. It is a free-to-play game, so that sounds like a fair price to me. And also, don't forget, once you purchase the Battle Pass, that Battle Pass is yours forever. It will never go away. Overall, the per-match XP um, earned outside of challenges definitely, I think, is something that, like, obviously needs to happen. Like, it, it's just baffling to me. How do you not earn XP per match? It's just... it's just... dumb. <laughs> but, yeah. But I can see why uh, they said they're going to resolve that, like, post-launch, and I understand, like, you know, why they want to, you know... Just wait till post on and see how this XP system works before they change anything. Time double XP boost efficiency? Uh, I think this definitely needs to be something like I can understand the per match XP, maybe wait till post launch, and then, well, actually, all of these are basically post launch, but I think something that should be fixed immediately is the double XP boost efficiency, which, if you don't know what that is, is basically the like if you play Call of Duty, there's those XP tokens, or like you get double XP and you have like a half hour. However, that half hour starts as soon as it's activated, so it's it can be uh, the timer could go even while you're in the main menu, which isn't a good thing. So I I think 343 should fix that with Halo Infinite and make that timer only go by once you're in a in a match rather than in the menus. And the desire for a career ranking system, what does that mean exactly? Is that like the like, are we talking about the competitive ranks, or are we talking about, like, casual ranks, like Halo Reach, or, like, Halo 4 kind of deal? Or, like, uh, like, what, what ranks are we talking about here? I'm assuming we're talking about, like, like, uh, Halo Reach ranks with Inheritor and shit like that. Um, yeah, that would be nice if we're talking about that. Um, we definitely need some sort of leveling system. It's, again, it's dumb not to have some sort of level system that Call of Duty's had, basically, since Call of Duty 4 where they have their prestiges, like level 1 through 50, and then your prestige kind of... It, it's always worked from a casual level. It's just, again, baffling to me how they they don't have that for Halo Infinite. But, again, we'll, we'll see. They said they will they want this too, and we're going to get it post-launch, and poop. And they, 
they are honest in saying that it, it it's gonna be a while when for that to happen, but at, at least they said yes. They haven't said anything about dual wielding, which is the personal thing I want. Moving on to the training mode, overall the team here is really happy about our feedback, and yes, the training mode is overall a phenomenal addition to Halo, and I'm. they did say they're going to add even more options post-launch, so that's great. And overall, there's really nothing much to say in this section. Overall, just the, the training mode is going to get a lot better from here. The next thing to talk about is the combat sensor, aka the motion tracker. Uh, the feedback that most people have given towards the motion tracker is that the range felt too small and especially in a uh, big team battle which i can kind of agree like i think in this in this game like the motion tracker seems really like far off in the bottom left corner and the as far as the range goes they did say they plan uh post launch to maybe increase it to 22 meters as opposed to 18 meters but in my opinion 343 they had it perfectly at the first flight with 20 meters. I don't know why they, they changed it to 18 meters as soon as they changed it back from the ability tracker in the first flight to motion tracker in the second flight. Like, I don't know why they, they changed it. I would recommend 20 meters as the middle ground. Um, I think that would be perfect in my opinion. They also said that the height indication was, plain, uh, was present in the flight 2 test, but not many players recognize its implementation. Um, yeah, I partially remembered it there, but I would argue I wouldn't. I actually don't want a height indication. I actually would like to go back to Halo 3 where it didn't tell you if an opponent was up or down, just so it doesn't give too much information. Um, having a radar and just telling, like, just telling players where everyone is 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 already enough. Next up are the multiplayer maps and modes. As far as the positive feedback, everyone loved the shit out of Behemoth, which. I mean, it's not, not, not for me. I mean, it's not a map for me, but I can see why people loved it, and I can see why it's considered an instant classic. But it, that map is just personally not for me. And uh, everyone loved the capture the flag mode. I mean, who doesn't? It's capture the flag, and many players appreciated strongholds, especially PC players that did not play it in Halo 5. So that's actually a pleasant surprise for me. Uh, so I'm glad you PC players like strongholds. One piece of feedback that was apparently split between the community is that uh, players expressed the desire to uh, kill with the flag with, you know, one hit melee rather than two. Which to me personally, uh, I'm, I know I'm going to sound like an elitist here, but I prefer the two hits. I know the it's mainly just the casuals that want the one hit. I, I, I'm sorry, there's no other way to put it. I, I just prefer two hits. I'm just naturally a competitive player. Don't get me wrong, I like to have fun in Halo's multiplayer, whether it be the standard settings or competitive settings, but I still prefer the two hits. Besides, uh, they did mention that when you do carry the flag in Halo Infinite, which I didn't even notice, you do melee faster than the you know than anyone else in the game, so uh, there's that. The next thing they mentioned is the bug that allowed vehicles to push flags and apparently it was mostly disliked f from the community which is i think is surprising i thought a lot of people would argue to keep it but i'm actually glad that uh that the community disliked it and they already did say they patched it next is big team battle and overall the team received a lot of positive feedback from us overall the community loved the map fragmentation which i can agree we also loved the vaults aka the loot caves which i honestly didn't even know that was the official name but there you go we we like the vaults um, we also like the pelican drops. Yes, I can agree. Pelican drops were cool. We also like the wildlife that was in, even though I didn't personally see any. But yes, it's cool that we have wildlife in the map rather than outside. Um, we also like the CTF flag rotations. Um, yep, I can agree. I was confused at first. I thought it was random, but yeah, I can agree. The CTF uh, flag rotations was a really cool idea. And lastly, we all love the mode Total Control, which is not really a new mode, just a variant of Strongholds, but it turned out to be a pretty good mode, and yeah, it was intense and I enjoyed it. The constructive criticism they got from us is basically that we want the powerful vehicles to spawn sooner, which, yeah, those vehicles spawn really late. Um, I talk about that in a BTB video. Link will be down in the description. As well as, and I quote, Jeff Steitzer, please. No, they, they literally wrote that in the blog post. It just says Jeff Steitzer, please. I forgot to mention him, well, or the lack of him in BTB, but I'm glad everyone else uh, made noise about it. 
and 343 is clearly aware and they did say he will be added post launch which is weird to me because he's already in the game you can't just like like you can't just port him to big team battle i mean it, it's just slayer just bigger I, I don't know that that sounds a little bizarre to me but hey i'm no game developer but there you go he, he will make a return to big team battle and that's great Next up are PC settings, which I actually don't care, even though I play on PC. You can read that for yourself. Moving on. The next topic is about the aiming. The constructive criticism they got from us is that aiming was too difficult on both controller and mouse and keyboard. Um, there is performance impacting aim, and as well as the confusion around red reticle remov removal in certain situations. Now this section is actually pretty important, aren't, uh, I feel, so I'm actually going to quote them word for word here. So. Quote, aiming was probably the most highly debated topic we saw emerge during the flight. Since we're, fir since we're a first person shooter, it's not something we take lightly. And we mentioned and we monitored it closely on both weekends. Some liked how difficult the aiming was, but many players felt the aiming was too difficult and or felt bad. We also know that when the game is not fully optimized, which in, in this case it was a tech preview build, aiming does not feel as good as it would at launch. There were also some players who weren't happy with the removal of Red Reticle on PC. Overall, there's a lot of factors to unpack when it comes to this one. When we started work on Halo Infinite, we did want aiming to require more skill, but we also didn't want it to feel bad for anyone. There was a strong focus on raising the skill ceiling without removing the fun. Natural aiming feel that you'd expect from a Halo game. The response from this fight has made us take a closer look at aiming but we needed to make sure we took a measured approach, especially knowing that the performance optimizations will also improve its feel in-game. As a result of this closer look, we made minor changes to the cone angle of aim assist on select weapons for launch. To be clear, this has not changed the strength slash stickiness of the aim assist, but it should help make aiming feel more natural." End quote. So yeah, I've definitely heard split feedback when it comes to aiming. Some people said it's too easy, or bleh. Some people say it's too hard and some people like it. I'm personally on the side of I really like the difficulty. If anything, maybe 343 can decrease the movement acceleration between 5 or 10%. But that's about it. I do, I am more on the side of I, I do want to keep the difficulty of aiming in this game. Performance impacting aim basically is more towards PC but can affect consoles. So essentially what that means whatever settings you might have could have affected your aim. And basically they're, they're saying hopefully at launch the settings that you'll put will not impact aim as much and aiming should feel much better at launch. Now as far as the cone angle changes that they did on select weapons, I'm just going to pull up this image here as this image best explains the uh, what does cone angle mean exactly. Now as far as the cone angle changes on specific weapons, uh, the pulse carbine went from 4 to 6 degrees, which I'm not sure if I agree with bumping it up to 6, maybe they should have bumped it up just to 5 because the pulse carbine is a tracking weapon. Uh, the VK-78 Commando went up from 5 to 5.5 degrees. This I can get behind, especially since the gun has bloom. Uh, the BR-75 went from 5 to 5.75 degrees, which I'm not sure how I feel about, because on one hand, the BR was a pretty consistent weapon, but on the other hand, when it got to those close ranges, it did get a little bit hard to aim. Uh, the heat wave went from 5 to 6.5 degrees. I don't really have an opinion on that. Uh, the Ravager went from 6 to 6.75 degrees. Uh, I guess I can sort of get behind that. I don't know if they increased the primary fire's blast radius. Uh, the MK-50 sidekick went up from 5 to 6.25 degrees. Eh, whatever helps a sidekick, that thing's garbage. Uh, the skewer went from up from 4.2 to 5.6 degrees, which... Uh, I guess I can agree with. The skewer is definitely hard to use. Uh, for me personally, I had a hard time using it. Uh, the S7 Sniper went up from 3 to 4 degrees, which... Uh, not sure how I feel about that. It's a sniper. It should be hard to use. But whatever. And then the shock rifle, they said they turned on hip hip fire magnetism. Which... Uh, Alright, we'll see how that turns out. This next section is pretty important here. So, quote... 
Another part of the confusion and frustration around aiming also likely stemmed from the removal of Red Reticle in online multiplayer on PC. We knew it would be controversial, but we trust our team when they say this will cut out another potential cheating ve vector. We saw quite a few people say, just build a better anti-cheat system, which isn't really the right way to look at it. Building a better anti-cheat system involves taking preventative measures across the entire game, wherever possible, to reduce the ease of cheating of creating cheats. This is one of those small steps that contributes to a larger anti-cheat strategy across the entire game. There is also feedback that stated red reticle range was needed to determine effective range on weapons, which although it is helpful, we don't agree with, with that necessity as most weapons. Though in the case of tracking weapons such as the plasma pistol and pulse carbine, or something that long saw on like the energy sword, we agree. Red Reticle was enabled on those weapons during the flight, and they will stay enabled, so you know when these weapons are ready to track or locked on on their target." End quote. Now I, as well as my friends, were definitely on the fence of, like, just frustration about the removal of Red Reticle, as we were just confused and baffled of, like, you know, where was the Red Reticle? It's, it's, weird. it's weird for a shooter, not just an FPS, not to have Red Reticle range. Like, it's... It's weird, like, uh, I don't know what the their anti-cheat team or whatever is maybe looking at, but I, I don't know. I, I want Red Reticle back, it's just weird for a shooter not to have one. Also, them saying that Red Reticle range isn't important on weapons, like, I don't know, to me that's pretty important information. Like, for example, again, <laughs> I'm always gonna bully this weapon, <laughs> the sidekick. I, I would like to know when it's red reticle so I know it's at its effective range, otherwise I'm pea shooting across the map like a fucking idiot, along with everyone else trying to do the same damn thing. Or maybe I'd like to know that kind of information with the commando, especially that game, uh, that game. That weapon has, has extremely, like, huge uh, recoil as well as bloom, so I would like to know where, where the red reticle range is so I know the bullets will most likely hit on my target. Additionally, this only applies to PC, so which means console has red reticle. So console players might have a, just a slight advantage over PC players in terms of them knowing the effective range on weapons. Honestly, I still think this will cause some confusion for PC players, and especially new players when they come in uh, on PC and, and start playing the game, and they notice some guns have red reticle and other guns don't. So just overall, I think this is still going to cause some confusion. And like I said before, every other shooter has Red Reticle. New players are going to come into this game and they're gonna, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be weird not to see Red Reticle on certain weapons. New players are going to come in and think their game is broken and then they're going to start asking you questions 343 and then you guys are going to be like, oh, uh, it's because of this. And then it's just like, how, how uh, often or how much is that information going to spread? The next thing to talk about are player outlines. The feedback they got from us is that outlines are too easy to see, like other players, like from a huge distance, as well as the desire to turn them off. Yeah, I was definitely on the side of player outlines being too easy, and it was more apparent, especially when playing BTB on fragmentation. Uh, you're able just to see just a player easily with the red outline or whatever color you have, just just across the map, and it's just like just too easy to spot enemies. I do have one suggestion in mind, however. So for example, if someone's in front of me and I aim my reticle at him, then the, route, the, the red outline kicks in. But if I'm not aimed at my target, then the red outline goes away. Uh, I don't know if that's easy or hard to implement, but that's my idea of a middle ground. But also, it, this would be more helpful if there was red reticle, because then this will also uh, play into the factor of distance. So let's say again, I have an AR or sidekick. The red outline will only kick in if my weapon has a red reticle. I mean, but then again, there's no red reticle, so I don't know about that. But those are my suggestions. They also talk about the desire to turn outlines completely off, which uh, I'm probably going to turn that on if outlines continue to, to be a problem for me. But yeah, they did say it was going to be post-launch and they want to give it to us uh, as soon as possible. Next thing they talk about are the weapons. Oh boy, this is my favorite part. The feedback they got from us are that many players expressed that the plasma pistol unperformed in most situations, 
Yep, it, the pilot pistol was actual dog water in the flight. I, I tried to make it work, that, that thing doesn't work. It's just, it's just ass, man. And uh, the next thing they talk about is, or like the, the feedback we gave them is, uh, people are worried about the bloom on the commando and sidekick, which, yeah, that's pretty valid. I mean, it is there is bloom on those weapons. As well as the sniper level's accuracy when out of scope, which, yeah, that, that to me is like a issue where like the, the f uh, hip firing with the sniper is not always guaranteed in the middle. So for the plasma pistol they did say they're gonna buff it. Um, they can't guarantee it at launch but hey at least they're gonna buff the plasma pistol so that's great. However they, it, uh, the thing still won't EMP vehicles which is okay because uh, especially with Halo Infinite's weapon sandbox with the new shock type of uh, ammo type the, the plasma pistol would kind of interfere with that so yeah, it makes sense for the plasma pistol no longer EMP uh, vehicles. But they said they will improve it against players, so that's good. As far as the commando and sidekick goes, 343 did say they performed pretty well uh, as far as their data goes. They actually did say the commando started to overperform in certain areas, and the sidekick is meant to be a sidearm. Which, yeah, I, they're they're not I've, they're right. The, the sidekick is supposed to be a sidearm. I mean, it kind of is in the name, but. Then again, this is Halo. Halo is supposed to have a good pistol, and you're basically telling skilled players, like not just me, but like everyone else, to just use the assault rifle and just be a brain dead idiot, just like everyone else. But if anything, like I I get why the AR and sidekick combo is what it is. The assault rifle is ridiculous, just because in every other shooter or whatever let's just call duty for example everyone uses an m4 or some form of, uh, of an assault rifle nobody really uses the, uh, the pistol and i guess they're trying to do that with halo but i, I feel like uh, this just discourages skilled players for you for using the pistol you know, or trying to be uh, more skillful than everyone else so i don't know we'll, we'll see how it goes i'm still gonna yell for a six shot rather than a seven shot like, I don't know, why couldn't you guys just copy the Gunfighter Magnum? I thought maybe just take the Gunfighter Magnum and just make it a more competent secondary. And that, that would be the end of it. But, you know, we'll see how these weapons perform. I'm sure they probably don't want to change weapons too much is because, you know, this was a flight tech test. Only a number of people played it and they want to see what the general public think before they start making huge weapon balance changes. They did nerf the Commando by... Uh, making the gun require one more shot to kill, which uh, I'm curious. I wish they would have gotten more specific, like one more headshot, because if it's one more headshot, then that is exactly one of my suggestions I made in my weapon balance videos. Um, did, did, did I do that? Or did... did hmm. Hmm. They also did state that they are not going to change the bloom on either of the weapons, but however, remember, they did change the uh, degrees or the cone angles on what we, I was talking about earlier. And for the commando, it was only by 0.5 degrees. I wonder if that's kind of an alternate response to my 5% decrease in bloom that I want that I wanted for the commando. Which, by the way, if you want to take a look at my weapon balance, or not weapon balance, uh, me analyzing the weapons during Halo Infinite's flight tech test, I'll leave a link down in the description. Lastly, about the sniper, and this is going to shock like some of you. I know it definitely shocked me when I was reading this. Um, apparently, um, when you're sh hip firing with the sniper rifle, apparently it's intended for you to sometimes miss when you're firing, which is baffling to me. Now apparently, other legacy sniper rifles in past Halo games, or maybe uh, maybe specifically Halo 1 and 2, if I can remember, um, apparently you were able to miss or several shots like within that really small circle, which is... I, I, I don't know if I remember that at all. I don't know if I can agree with this decision. If it is legacy, which is... It's weird to me, I don't remember the sniper ever really having spread w with the hip, I thought it was always in the middle, but if, if it's going to be like this, then I think at the very least, the first shot should always be in the middle. It should only start spreading if you start spamming the trigger, I think that's the best way to, uh, to balance 
bad intended action. The last thing that I'm going to talk about is movement. The biggest two pieces of feedback they got from us is that the desire for physics impulses to help with grenade jumps, etc. As well as split feedback considering, uh, concerning player collision and other things that they like to return. As for physics impulses such as grenade jumping and the gravity hammer physics, uh, they did agree and they will implement uh, gravity impulses post launch, which is great to hear. As far as player collision goes, for now 343 says they're going to keep them off as they see uh, more benefits of them being off rather than on, but I'd argue for them being on. It's just, again, much like Red Reticle, it's weird to just phase through your opponents and enemies. I mean, player collision is just something that happens in a shooter, and if anything, it, it, there's a bit of a skill gap there in a the sense where you got to be aware of where your teammates and enemies are at, or like especially your teammates, you know, better not bump into them or better not shoot them or, uh, you know, it, it's just a thing in shooters. It, it's just, it's just natural. The next few things they go over are the UI, equipment, and vehicles. Now, I'm not going to go over all these topics in detail because I think I've made past videos that better respond to these topics better, which, of course, I will link down in the description. And that's going to be it for this video. If you stuck with me to the end, then please hit the like button. This took me forever to make. As well as share it with your friends and anyone else who might be interested. And all my links and my Twitch and Twitter will be down in the description. And until next time, peace.